But this is just the tip of the iceberg. So now we have robots and 3D printers that are basically cheaper, faster, and more accurate than you. We have autonomous vehicles that are safer and cheaper than you, and we have AI and quantitative computing that is smarter than you. And that's just when they're isolated technologies. Stage two is when they converge, and it's already happening. So Amazon already has a patent out to put 3D printers on vehicles. The vehicle will probably be autonomous. So it will print what you want as it's driving it to you. Toyota's investing a billion. As I said, things start to happen when the money moves. Toyota's best investing a billion in artificial intelligent driving systems. So not only to replicate what you can do, to, but to predict what's going to happen before a human could ever do it. In time for the 2020 Olympics, because what they want is robo-cabs throughout Tokyo. That's their big thing. 3D printed, autonomous, and cognitive AI vehicles. So early this year, Oli was reduced. So this is a bus that's autonomous, has what IBM Watson technology built into it, and was 3D printed. So we've got a convergence of three technologies all coming together there. And Amazon's just re-engineering its entire business model using all of these technologies. So Amazon, Kiva Systems, picking how long before they start to say, well, why don't we just put a Baxter? Why do we even need the human in that equation at all? And Amazon, of course, has already thought about that, so it's doing a competition, reaching out to the smart brains of the world and saying, come up and find, f figure out how to do that. And there was a competition take the year. The winning robot this year was from the Netherlands. It's not good enough to be operationalized. But it was 100 times an hour. It picked 100 items from the shelf, three times faster than 12 months earlier, even though Amazon had made the challenge more difficult. So again, it's learning at an exponential rate. How long before the robots make the robots? So the future supply chain, this sixth wave of creative disruption, is going to be personalized. Consumers will become creators. The Internet of Things and AI will create a world of devices that remember personal preferences. Mass production is going to be replaced by customization and configuration. And we're going to be in a world, it's certainly with Industry 4.0 when that starts, the rubber starts to hit the road on this, where people will be able to order things specifically designed for themselves and get it at a price point that we're used to with mass produced items. It's going to be fully automated. The entire value chain is being set to be completely automated, from 3D printing to digital products and demand, from robotic production all the way through to autonomous last mile delivery. And it's going to be local. Local logistics, local manufacturing, micro-entrepreneurism, you know, there's going to be, production is going to be reshored to be near the consumer. This whole mass manufacture with low-cost labor, that's not going to be the future. The future is going to be moving production to where the consumers are. Because effectively, labor is going to be a lower and lower piece of the equation. Delivery micro-logistics networks support one-eye delivery, consumer customized and download schematics for home production. So that's going to create enormous amounts of wealth huge amounts of new industries that don't even exist yet, from VR to AR, robot industry, et cetera, et cetera. New technology, new business models, new skill sets, but the question, of course, is how many new jobs? Because if we look at this, there was something called the great decoupling. Jobs and manufacturing used to trend together. When manufacturing went up, jobs went up. That isn't happening anymore. Jobs are still going up, but nothing like the rate of manufacturing output. And the reason for that is automation, digitization. Quick example, Kodak went bust in 2012. It was, didn't grab onto the digital revolution, even though it created it. It was a Kodak engineer that created the digital camera. And they buried it because they were too sold on their own film processing assets. It had 145,300 employees at its peak. Instagram, the company that was known for capturing memories, which if you remember, was the brand promise of Kodak, capture your memories, and his max had 13 people. WhatsApp, 450 million customers, 19 billion market capitalization, 55 employees. We don't need people in the same way. Nike is reshoring most of its manufacturing. Adidas, we've already seen. But it's not the manufacturing's coming home, the jobs aren't. And companies, therefore, need to adapt. Because if you don't become part of the creation, you sure as hell will be part of the destruction. 
companies with the hierarchical command and control business model you know, are going to struggle. Existing assets are not going to be worth as much as you think they are. They're going to be rendered obsolete. Technology is going to undermine the advantages of sales. Small upstarts will suddenly come along and take your business away. Labor costs are going to become a less relevant part of the manufacturing equation. So therefore, companies need to develop complex, adaptive, agile, anticipatory systems. And they need to think and work differently together. Jeff Bezos always talks about the two pizza team. Any team that can't be fed with more than two pizzas is a team that's too big. So it's you know, working in new, agile ways in order to address these challenges.